Uh, we'll come to the last paper right now. Uh, this will be presented by Oritro Boshu, who is Assistant uh, Professor of English, CDOE, Robindra Bharati University. And uh, the title of the paper is It's Literally Theoretic Curricula Theory and the Problem of Oversimplification. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to take this opportunity to thank PSAGS for giving me this opportunity to present my paper at this auspicious conference. And special thanks to Dr. Maji for giving me a brilliant background of analyzing syllabi, because that is precisely what I also plan on doing in my uh, brief paper. This paper is very difficult to summarize in 10 minutes, just like everyone else's, so I'll start right away. What happened to the it will take a couple of minutes to start the debate anyway. So, uh, since the popularization of literary theory, it has gone to the extent of being included in the undergraduate, postgraduate, and in some cases doctoral curricula of many universities across the world in departments like English, Comparative Literature, Bengali, Cultural Studies, Film Studies, and many more. Being a tool of critical examination, it is undoubtedly important for literary theory to see itself reflected in the syllabi of institutes of higher education. However, in the context of developing countries, especially countries that were colonies of Western countries for centuries, this inclusion could mark a turn towards recolonization. If the instance of India is taken, then there will be innumerable central state and private institutes that have maintained the status quo of including not only theories from the West, but also texts that justify their existence. This is not to say that all critical and literary theories have been produced in the West, but the bulk of what students in the undergraduate and postgraduate classes are taught include theories that, are, that largely benefit the hitherto colonizers. Narrowing the scope of this argument, down to the two universities of West Bengal, namely the University of Calcutta and Jadavpur University, this point becomes all the more pertinent. For the purpose of this paper, only the CPCS syllabi of these universities will be considered. In an attempt to modernize and update the syllabi of these universities, it can be argued, and I say this with a lot of apprehension, from a perspective of both literary theory and otherwise, that these syllabi have lost their former depth analysis and scope for detailing, which makes the student interested in the ways of theory, but not enough informed to take it on as a research once their post-graduation ends in a hurry. Now I'll over, offer an overview of the PG syllabi of CU and GU. CU offer 14, offers 14 core courses and allows the student an apparent choice of four discipline-specific electives called DSEs from a range of 13 options in their four-semester plan for a two-year MA program. Additionally, there are two general elective courses as well. Next slide, please. Yeah. As you can see, this is the outline of the syllabus of CU and the courses that are highlighted there are the ones that deal with literary theory. Only four, only four courses deal with theory on criticism, which is about 28.5% of the course's strength and exactly 20% of the total number of courses. On the other hand, Jadapur University Sorry, offers... You start Sorry. Okay. On the other hand, Jadavpur University offers a total of eight core courses and eight optional courses in the two-year MA. Two of these eight courses are about literary theory at the titular level, which is 25% as highlighted in the next slide. As you can see, these are the two courses at, a, at the titular level which talk about literary theory. This is the 2017 to 2018 syllabus, which I studied under. The number of optional courses offered in JU is way too high to be figured into this calculation and from a personal experience and from what is written in the syllabus, I can say with certainty that only a few of these options are available every semester. A comparative pictorial analysis of the presence of literary theory in these two universities can be shown in the next slide. As you can see, there is a little more of theory at the titular level in CU and a little less in JU, it's only 25%. But I say this with, again, a lot of apprehension because this is not the true picture. It is just what looks from the outset. A titular analysis alone is not nearly enough to offer conclusive insights into the importance that theory has had on the syllabi of these universities. 
Despite the fact that the titles contain the mention of theory only once every four times round in the figures of, theory has a much larger impact than that. In the 56 pages of the PG syllabus of CU, theory finds itself mentioned in 14 of them. Surprisingly, that is also exactly 25%. In the 28 page JU PG syllabus, however, the scenario is a little different. Theory as a word is mentioned in 15 of the 28 pages, which is closest to 50%, 53.5 to be exact. These numbers are not, reveal, are not that revealing without context. Why is theory sprinkled in such a high proportion in a university like JU? Even in CU, where the percentage is comparatively lower, it still accounts for one-fourth of the curriculum. Delving deep into the syllabi of these two universities and at hand, some similarities and even more differences come to light with regard to the texts chosen for the core or compulsory courses that are entirely about literary theory. A brief synopsis of the JU syllabus says the emphasis should also be on themes, trends and movements and concepts rather than texts. Core courses should concentrate on leveling up the students' critical abilities and understanding of wider social, historical and political contexts, while instruction related to genre, period or clustered around a canon should be carried out primarily through the optional courses. The CUMS syllabus on the other hand states, and I quote, the curriculum aims to create a balance between texts and textuality, socio-cultural and linguistic theory, language studies and professional oriented training. It is created with an intention to equip the learners not with the ideas they need to understand the key periods in English literature, but also the global events and concepts that influence and mold them. From the outlook of the two universities, it can be argued that the fundamental approach is different. Is it more important to understand the history and the key texts that have been produced in each period? Or is it more important to understand and rationalize the theories that have created havoc in 20th and 21st century academia, leading to conferences like the one we are presently in? Among the texts commonly considered as a part of literary criticism, both universities have their share of Plato, Aristotle, Johnson and Dryden. As you can see, this is the CU outline for the course entitled Literary Criticism 1. There is a detailed analysis of the names of texts along with their authors is clearly mentioned in this. However, if we go to the JU syllabus, next slide please, you can see that the outline is more broad. There is no such hard and fast names of texts being provided in the syllabus. This actually marks a difference in the pedagogy in the two universities, whereas CU offers a more focused understanding of the theories that are being taught. In JU, the concepts are more fluid and this is not only from an analysis of the syllabus, it's also a personal experience from when I studied there as a master degree student. The fundamental idea is that it is unclear whether Aristotle's poetics would be taught in tandem with Plato's Republic or Ion. From personal experience, I can say that both these texts were talk covered in the 2017 to 2019 batch. This leaves room for innovation and implementation of teacher's personal pedagogical approach in class, depending on who is teaching a particular text or a course. For instance, when we were taught Schelling, late Professor Shapon Chakraborty too, took those classes. It can be argued with some authority that the same text when taught by two different faculty members will have two different approaches and conclusions in the minds of the listener or the student. However, the most significant aspect of these two courses is in the difference in their titles. While CU calls the course Literary Criticism 1, JU calls it Literary Theory 1. There is a sea of differences between the two which uh, I will uh, skip for the time being because uh, we are running out of uh, short of time. But the fundamental point which I want to mention here is that the same texts which are included in literary criticism in CU are included in JU under the title Literary Theory 1. Whereas when we were taught these courses, uh, whoever took those classes, I don't exactly remember, it was probably Shantanuda. He told us with some certainty that there is a significant difference between criticism and theory and there, this difference is marked with the entry of hermeneutics in 19th century academia which marked the, which turned criticism towards theory. And CU has another course, Literary Criticism 2, which contains the romantics and late 19th century theorists which takes into account the turn from literary criticism to literary theory. Whereas when we go to Jadavpur University, we will see, next slide please, 
This is the course for CU, which is titled Literary Criticism Part 2. As you can see, it's a huge syllabus, right? I'm not saying that the syllabus which is offered in JU is not huge. It's probably even huger. On the onset, just looking at the syllabus, it looks like less. But when it's taught, because of the way and the fluidity of the syllabus, this change takes place. As you can see, here, here we can find the mention of uh, Eliot, Freud, Schiller and Schelling, which were taught to us in Literary Theory 1, which was the first course on theory. Next. And this is finally a list of the optional papers which were there during the MA program 2017 to 2019. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five optional papers which deal with the idea of literary theory. I've included queer studies as an area of literary theory here because it was taught to us in theory, though it mentions here as a special area. I've taken some liberty to include it as an area of literary theory. So these terminologies bring us to the understanding that these two terms can never be considered mutually exchangeable. Therefore, theoretically speaking, literary theory came after literary criticism as a wanted or unwanted consequence of the latter's incapabilities. The difference between the two universities is telling insofar as their pedagogical approaches is, is concerned. While JU has given a free rein to the course conductors, which is very good when it comes to dealing with personal choices or personal problems of students, CU is more orthodox in its approach. It is also to be noted that the document containing the CU syllabus is almost double in size as compared to the JU one and has more detailing in every course. Despite the fact that the number of optional papers provided in JU is more than is that of CU, from an outsider's perspective, the syllabi of CU looks more complete, holistic and user friendly as compared to the apparently cryptic syllabi of JU that has only four to five lines of details for all the optional papers. In the paper titled Violating Pedagogy Literary Theory in the 21st Century College Classroom, Heather Johnson argues how, and I quote, theory is notoriously difficult. It also functions as a mark of distinction. The writer or speaker who can reference theoretical ideas with confidence and accuracy is marked as an expert and accorded at least a measure of respect. This measure of respect is almost equally distributed in both universities as the syllabi, despite being different, does not shy away from being difficult. On shifting the focus to the compulsory courses in both of these universities that deal with the literary theory paper, some more insights would come to the fore. Before we do that, it is important to note that the apparent difference in the syllabi is compensated by the optional papers provided by JU. While the detailed outline is not available in the public domain to the best of my knowledge, during the tenure of 2017 to 2019, the, the, these courses were taught. Coming back to the compulsory courses, CU's course structure begins with Eichenbaum and ends with Habermas while covering the obvious stoppages of Lukács, Baudrillard, Foucault, Derrida and others. The full syllabus can be seen in slide 8. Next slide. This is the uh, syllabus for CU's literary theory course. On the other hand, JU's course has a lot of elements that were included in CU's second course on literary criticism like Wordsworth and Coleridge. This goes on to prove that at the end of the day, universities are more or less of the same opinion when it comes to decisions regarding what is to be taught in the class in the context of theory. Does this not uncomplicate the matter at hand and drive the students to a particular standpoint in their careers where they are taught to think along certain lines? while other avenues of exploration and insights are not given that much importance, I think only time will tell. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, in this session, we had uh, four very, very interesting papers. I would say all of the paper presenters have, there are much reading and uh, insights have gone into the writing of the papers. There is no doubt about that because they are very informed not only of the subject matter but also of the approach and theories, theoretical approaches.